Hey guys, I want to do a CVT 101. Uh, this is Gary from GeForce Power Sports. We're a mini quad shop focusing on Apex and DRR CVTs. And let's go through a little bit of a CVT 101 because I find it's important that you know, basically the first step is knowing what each component does, what it's responsible for. And what you'll find is that each component has its own job, but at the same time, every change in one area of the CVT will also trigger a reaction throughout the other components. So then you'll have to go back and readjust. Um, so let's get started. All right, so basically what we have here is the uh, CVT system. I have everything taken out for a better viewing. So basically you have a rear pulley, you have a front pulley, and you have a belt. So basically how it starts is you have your pulley here, okay? And then your belt will start over here. And when you're in low gear, the belt is going to be all the way at the top of the rear pulley and it'll be all the way down in the front pulley. So what happens is the motor turns, you create RPMs and the centrifugal clutch with its three shoes, as this turns more RPMs based on the weight and the adjustment of the shoe springs, it will open up and grab the bell, which will now drive the ATV. So if it seems like it's that simple, there's really, it's really a lot more to it than that. So basically the great part about a CVT is a CVT. The bad part about a CVT is a CVT. So what does that mean? That means it's great when you have it tuned right. Um, often, you know, people are chasing, uh, you know, expectations or uh, performance that they're not even sure what the optimal is. So they just keep changing, 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 throw stuff against the wall, see what sticks, make five chains at a time and end up going slower, more frustration and unreliable ATV. So let's talk about each component. And basically, we'll start back here again. So we have a rear pulley, okay? And this one happens to be a Molossi overrange. And what makes it an overrange is just the basic the size. The overall size gives you a bigger ratio. Um, and when you go to an overrange, you generally use a longer belt and a bigger front pulley, which with the same aspect is, this is a Molossi overrange too. So it's a bigger mating surface so you can get more ratio and use a longer belt. One of the benefits of an overrange as well is it reduces the heat in the CVT. So it makes it not have to work so hard. So you get lower low and higher highs, but you also have to have a certain level of performance to realize the gains. All right. So we have the rear pulley. Okay. And basically we have the next major component. Here is the torque spring. So what this does, it sits in a cup in here, then your clutch goes on and then your bell. So this is how it would look when it was fully assembled. So what happens is, and why it's so important to have the right torque spring and to also change it often, as much as every 15 minutes to 45 minutes, you can see the spring has got some pushback on it. Now there are different colors, there's different strengths, there's different, and it's not just the overall strength. You have to look at how much does it take to compress it versus just the initial push. So there's spring rate, there's different lengths, a lot of variables to take into consideration. We always recommend uh, consulting a professional race shop to get your um, baseline for your CVT setup. So what happens is with the clutch on here and the bell, then you, you have your, your belt goes on here and it goes around your front pulley. So as the motor turns, you're going to notice the belt is going to go into the start at the top, but go in side to the back pulley and then go up on the front pulley. Very similar to riding a 10-speed bicycle um, where you start off in first gear and your front sprocket's really small and uh, your big sprocket, the back sprocket, I'm sorry, is, is really big. And each time you shift, the front sprocket gets bigger and the rear sprocket gets smaller. So you're never really pedaling anymore, but you're, you're going faster. So it's very similar principle uh, with the CVT. So the motor may not be turning more RPMs, but you're gaining speed. And that's because the belt going from the top up here and the bottom here and going to the top here and to the bottom here. So that means every revolution of the motor turns the transmission uh, much faster. So that's how you get your speed. So lots of variables, including, you know, what, when is your clutch engaged? What RPM you shifting? Max RPM. There's a lot of variables, but back to the basics. So we have our rear pulley, our torque spring, which gives us resistance. We have our belt, which helps give us ratio between the two pulleys. And then what we have is a set of rollers right here. 
if you can see these, you got six little rollers and these are overrated size. They're 19 by 15.5s. Um, stock use the size 15 by 12. So basically, if I take the front pulley, you'll see back here, there's uh, six slots. So the rollers sit in here and you can use, uh, you know, different weights based on how fast you want it to shift. So you can alternate every other one with different roller weights. So what happens is the heavier these weights are, the faster it's gonna shift, okay? So the trick is to have enough weight that it shifts, so which means it's gonna pull the belt from the top of the rear and pull it up on the front, because that's how you accelerate, okay? That's how you're getting faster by turning the same amount of RPMs, okay? So the trick is to shift as fast as you can and hard as you can without bogging the motor. So that's really the big trick. Now, if the rollers are too light, it's gonna rev and not shift. Okay, so the belt's not gonna have enough uh, pull to get it up to the top of the front variator, the front pulley here. It's gonna go up to about here. So basically what happens, you wanna have the right roll of weight so the motor can shift where it makes horsepower. So basically when I tune something, I'll try to go with the lighter roll of weights, do a few runs, and I'll take a marker and I'll put it on the front pulley like a, like a uh, pinwheel. So that way you can either, you can gauge your RPMs at a certain distance, and then you can also see how much the belt wipes off. Um, so then it also comes down to, you know, what kind of riding are you doing? Is it the uh, woods racing? Is it motocross racing? Because having to tune it for 45 minutes for an hour race versus a 15 minute race, um, that's different. Okay. So basically going back to review this, um, we have the basics, which is your rear pulley, and this is an oversized, so you get more ratio. You have your torque spring, which provides resistance to the shift. And when you let off the gas, it also creates the downshift. You have your centrifugal clutch, which means as it rotates, these shoes will open up and they'll grab the inside of the bell. And that's how you get the engagement to the transmission, okay? So clutch engagement can be controlled in a couple different ways. One is the overall weight of the clutch is the number one factor because if it's lighter or heavier, it can only adjust within a certain range. Now, if you wanna fine tune it, we do have what we call clutch shoe springs that can be put in here and they provide more resistance to kind of work within the range of how heavy the clutch is. So a heavier clutch is gonna engage earlier and a lighter clutch is gonna engage at a higher RPM. So for an entry level rider, they generally wanna replace the stock clutches, put a heavier trail clutch in until the rider gets used to the power. So the high performance guys, they need to raise their stall up high so the clutch will engage where the motor makes torque. So generally with a two stroke, when you have more horsepower, you create more RPMs to get that horsepower. And at the same time, then you need to engage your clutch at a higher RPM. So it's just finding the right balance of clutch engagement. Um, and like I said, between the weight of the clutch and the shoe springs, uh, those are the biggest items that are supposed to dictate your stall. Now, if you change your roll of weight or your belt length, that can affect your stall as well. But once again, we're trying to define what is the clutch's job? What is the clutch shoe springs job? Their job is to set the clutch engagement RPM. The bell, and a good quality bell is very important for cooling, for better grip, um, no slippage on takeoff. Its job is to one, see how it's splined, it connects to the transmission. When it comes positive engagement with the clutch, now that becomes positive engagement to the transmission, okay? So the torque spring, which is the most frequently changed item in the CVT, it provides resistance to the shift. So when the belt's at the top and the motor's turning, it's trying to pull the belt up on the front and the torque spring saying, no, 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 you're not going anywhere yet. So basically the spring is providing resistance to the shift in relation to the weight of the roller weights. So they play together very, very precisely and carefully and have to be matched accordingly based on uh, resistance, shift, and then the weight, okay? So not only does it provide resistance to the shift, but when you let off the gas, they come in and out of turns, and you get it, when you let off the gas, it kicks it back down to low gear, which means the belt shrinks from the top front pulley and goes back up high on the rear pulley, okay? So then the front pulley, you know, is uh, connected to the crankshaft, and then the belt will try to ride up from the bottom here all the way to the top to get that transmission ratio, like I said, like a 10-speed bicycle, so it goes faster. So if you put two heavier roller weights in, it may take off good one or two times, or you may get the whole shot, 
but you'll find after a couple turns, it'll start going brrrr, brrrr, and it'll kind of have like a, almost like you're starting off in like soft sand and then hitting concrete. So it's uh, basically, it's shifting too fast where the motor can't get on its horsepower rating. Okay, so for a quick review, clutch sets the uh, clutch engagement RPM. Bell is the contact between the transmission and the, uh, the pulley system. Torque spring provides resistance to the shift and also allows for the downshift when you let off the gas. Go, so it goes back into low gear. The rear pulley provides the ratio and connects the belt to the front pulley. The front pulley has roller weights in it and basically it provides a ratio based on the angle of the service to give you a, a shift rate, okay? So that's the basics of what each one's gonna do. Now, for some reason, people say, oh, I want a higher stall. Let me put lighter roller weights in it. Will that give you a higher stall? Usually it will, but that's not how you want to achieve it because what happens is even though it's affected the clutch, now you won't get the same shift rate. So the motor's not going to shift as hard. So it's going to make more of a sound than an acceleration, but yet you got a higher stall. So how can that be? Everyone tells me online, oh, lighten the rollers, higher stall. Yes, it does do that. But once again, circling back, if I change the length of the belt, my stall could go up. If I shorten the belt, my stall could go down. So each component has its own job, but anytime you make a change to any one of these, it's gonna affect the other one and you need to look at the overall tuning package, okay? So I'm gonna take this cover off and this is what it looks like when it's assembled. So you can see right now, this is in low gear, okay? We have a clutch here, take the bell off. So we have our clutch, okay? And this is a big 39 millimeter nut. We do have the sockets for that to make your life a lot easier. And uh, I'm not sure if you can see this, when you lean it forward, you'll see that the belt is actually on top of the rear pulley and it's at the bottom of the front pulley. Okay, let me take this off and show you. Bye bye, get that out of the way, Sorry about that. Um, so basically what happens is you can see that it's sitting at the bottom of the front pulley. Now the torque spring is applying pressure back here, keeping uh, the belt up high on the rear and low on the front, okay? So what happens is once this motor starts turning, the roller weights start to push the pulley halves together here, and that grabs the belt and forces it upwards, okay? So it's all based on the ratio of the weight, the belt length, the surface angles, and the strength of the spring. So there's a lot of moving components in here, but once again, this is about what does each component do, and then we can do a CVT, you know, uh, tuning thing next. All right, so remember the belt's at the bottom here, top here, spring's keeping pressure. Once the motor starts turning, the roller weights compress the two halves here, making the belt go up on the top. Heavier the rollers, the faster it shifts. But if it shifts too fast, you can bog or you won't stay in your power range. Two lighter rollers, the bike's gonna rev and not shift, okay? Once again, you can do the testing with the wheels on the ground, draw some marker lines here, you know, say at like 200 feet or so, and when you come back, uh, any marker uh, where the belt ran will come off and you'll see kind of how much belt travel you have. And uh, I think that's gonna be it for the basic what each component does. I hope that you enjoyed this. This is my first video. Um, I'll try to make more in the future.